Impro Theater and the cast and crew of this online performance would like to take this time to honor the indigenous peoples of the ancestral and unceded homelands we each inhabit and to consider the legacy of colonization and its far-reaching effects. Hey everybody, welcome to Impro Talk. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening if this is the future. Thank you for watching live if this is Saturday, July 31st, 2021. So happy that you're here. Very excited about today's guest, Michaela Dietz. She'll be here in just a second. And you can go to improtheater.com for information about classes and shows. If you're interested in taking a class, you can email Nick and uh, he is reachable at school at improtheater.com. Our very special guest, Michaela Dietz. Here she comes. You know her uh, as Amethyst on Steven Universe. She was also on Barney and Friends, Adventure Time Distance Lands, Craig of the Creek, Tuco and Birdie, so many things. Michaela Dietz is here. She's going to make a grand entrance, y'all. So here she is. Hi. <laughs> ah, that was fantastic. That was the best entrance so far. It was like, uh, you know, you know when you like the old school Nintendo and you get the mushroom in there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh were you an old school gamer were you a gamer kid growing up no bro no, not really. no, no. <laughs> i tried i'm not i'm like one of those people who like plays and i have to like move the i'm just i'm not great at it i like tetris yeah does that count because you're are you good at at uh, organizing shoe boxes in your closet yeah i'm really good at puzzles and um Actually, my lover says that I'm the best there ever was at like um, dishwasher Tetris. Like, you oh, think yeah. you don't have enough room for certain plates or whatever. And I'm just like, so, so yeah. there's that movie, uh, Rachel Getting Married. Do you know that movie? Yeah, uh, but I haven't seen it in so long. Yeah, but there's the dishwasher scene with Bill Irwin. Um, where they're organizing the dish, it's this very emotional scene where it seems like it's really a fun family organizing the dishwasher scene and then, uh, and then it gets very personal. But, but yeah, so you're a dishwasher organizer. That's Yeah, we, it doesn't get too heated. I'm just like very focused, you know? Um, but I think that the top rack is often underestimated. Oh. You know, it, uh, it <laughs> so utensils can go in the top rack. I mean, some, yeah, but I feel like the top rack needs a rebrand. You know, it's just like, not just for cups. Like, I get it. Um, for me, it's mostly stuff that I think will melt. Plastic stuff that I think will melt if I put it in the bottom rack. Tupperware. What do you mean melt? Well, you know, like Are... water gets super hot. But is it like an inferno? Like, what do we, I mean, what do we We have about? a, our dishwasher is literally an inferno brand dishwasher. It's called Satan's dishwasher. <laughs> um anyway uh more about dishwashers in a minute but first um let's talk about Michaela Dietz so you did when a, a few years ago we were talking in a voiceover waiting room um and you were doing this deep exploration of your childhood and stuff and you, I think you went to South Korea. Did you not go to South Korea? Oh, shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, of my child, like, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I When you said a deep exploration, I'm like, oh, man, are we going to go back to, like... No, I don't have... I don't I, have... like, regressed, and then I, would like, wet my pants at night, like, when I was, like, five, and yada, yada. Like, I no. put on my own diapers. It just, it got weird. Um... Sorry, what were we talking we about? We weren't going to talk about that, but you just did. So I guess that's oh. on the record now. Um, well, I just had a small bladder. Yeah. So did you, did, so you had, you grew up in Cooperstown, New York. Yeah, so I'm, um, I grew up in Cooperstown, New York. I was born in Incheon, South Korea, and I was adopted by family in Cooperstown um, when I was three and a half months old. 
So, I mean, everyone in my family is Caucasian. Um, and if you're familiar with upstate New York, it's like one of the whitest towns you've ever seen. And it's tiny. Sure. It's like, you know, it's like a village. It's an actual historic village. And um, yeah, a lot of white picket fences. So, I mean, there weren't like a ton of other uh asian people like really any not a lot of people of color period um but i did have a little posse of other korean adoptees um there were like a few others in my town. that's fortunate yeah it was i mean it was interesting we all like had the most like irish and german last names um and so yeah when i saw you i, I i'm not sure when we spoke but um my birth search i went back to korea i was searching yep. for my birth family and it was this really like a monster um of a of a sojourn like i mean <clears throat> a lot of misleads um i actually was reunited with the wrong family oh my gosh yeah so that was sort of nuts but um cut to 2015 i did meet my actual biological family and oh so i have four uh full-blooded sisters wow yeah and they're all older and um and funnily enough and they're full-blooded like um my my birth mom and birth dad were in an intact marriage and like um my birth father passed away in the 90s um, but I, you know, I know my birth mother now and, um, it's just so interesting. Like my birth sisters, how similar we are in so many different, I mean, they're all very different, but I feel like I have pieces of each, you know, one of them. Yeah. Um, one of them was an actress for a while. Uh, one of them's a singer songwriter. It's really, it's really, I mean, I, I'm not very musical, but like, you know, just using your voice for a living. It's, it's, That's amazing that you had that in common. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's wild, so. And did you, have you kept in touch with them since 2015? Oh yeah, I went back. Um, the last time I was in Korea was for uh, one of my birth sister's weddings. Uh, and that was, wild like being in a korean wedding it's so it's so different from from american like from an american wedding um but i remember like it was a really big deal because for the wedding meal we had steaky like all the old korean people are like steaky like mika there's steaky here they call me mika they're like mika steaky um because the way like for them you know they're like barbecuing their meat. They're not, you're sure. not getting like a huge hunk. Um, so that was, uh, that was pretty fun, but there were all these games and songs and like, it was really, people just didn't dress up as much as they do here, you know? So like some people would just roll up in like a sweater vest and, like a <laughs> and then like other people were just like dressed to the nines. It really, um, it was pretty wild. Um, oh, I want to go to a wedding where I just, get to show up in a sweater vest and a t-shirt man that i mean pretty great same same <laughs> i feel like i don't know la is weirdly like that though not for <laughs> weddings but like to restaurants i feel like you know somebody's in somebody's in like in any given restaurant somebody's in like a tux and like just like a t-shirt with a bunch of holes in it which i'm sure costs like more than some five hundred dollars right yeah, like you know did you know in advance that the sort of the like less formal nature of the way. Did you know what to expect no. before you went? Oh, no. you didn't? Had no idea, had no idea. <laughs> like I thought there was gonna be like dancing and then like we all hang out after and like it just, oh, it, it was just weird. Like, and I even think my, my sister's, my K sister's wedding was more like westernized than like uh, some other Korean weddings which usually take place at like a big kind of event hall and a ton of people come through and like, um, yeah, no, this one was definitely more like she wore this white dress and there was, they actually walked down sort of like a, a grassy aisle. And yeah, it was, it was cool. I, 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 now that I know what to expect, I, I would like to go back. 
Did you meet even more extended family or old family friends? No. So, I, you know, I, I wish I had my um, my birth family's pretty closed off from the rest of their family um, for reasons which I won't even bore you with. But sure. um, but yeah, I, oh gosh, I would love to meet cousins. I would love to meet aunts and uncles. So, you know, maybe one day. Yeah. 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 I remember when we were talking about this, I don't, I don't remember if we talked right before and then right after the, the, um, the, like, um, the false reunion, false reunion thing. Yeah. But I do remember like talking about it. Cause I just, I had recently watched Henry Louis Gates Jr.'s uh, discovering your roots show where he, he get, you know, sits with a celebrity person and then talks about like, ah, we looked into your past and here's who you're related to and that kind of thing. Um, and how, yeah, like, um, how you would have to go into what you did, the search that you did, you'd have to go into that with like this really, um, I don't a know. Shield. Uh, yeah, a shield. Yeah. It's, you know, Mike, it really was one of the hardest things I've ever done. I mean, I hit so many walls, like matching with my, the first biological family, the false one was, it came pretty easily. Um, and I even, you know, I thought at the time, like, oh God, this is too good to be true. This is amazing. Like I thought it was going to take for years. It only took weeks. And then, you know, it was the wrong fam. But um, so following that, just dealing with the Korean bureaucracy um, and then even just like uh, cultural differences, um, language barriers, it, it was really, really hard. And and I think there are so many moments where my family who, you know, they were so supportive and they obviously loved me and wanted me, you know, to find my birth family because they knew how important it was to me. They also were just like, Michaela, you are in pain right now. Like, this is, what are you doing? Like, why don't you stop? Why don't you take a break? But it's just, I think, you know, for, I'm sure, I'm sure other adoptees can relate to this. It's just, you know, there's something inside you driving you to continue because you just feel like you need to be rooted to something like I had never experienced like looking at someone's face who looked like me or like hearing them or you know what I mean like yeah. there are just so many touch points that I think a lot of people who grow up with their biological family you know just not even take for granted they just it's just never on the radar you just exactly yeah exactly I remember growing up having people because I have you know, a big, a lot of siblings. And yeah. I remember people saying to different, like if there's more than one of us in, at, at one place at a time, people would say to different ones of us, oh, you look more like your mom. You look more like your dad. You look like a combo, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And it did, it did occur to me how that that's a factor, but it was not an unusual thing to hear. And so I'm sure for you meeting somebody that kind of looks like you was kind of mind-blowing um totally and um my birth mom the first time I heard her voice over the phone before I met her she was like hey, hey, hey. I was like oh my god we have the same <laughs> voice like it just <laughs> it freaked me out she um, could she could double for you on a job if she if you oh to. yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah like she'd be taft Hartley'd no um, <laughs> did you <laughs> go ahead go ahead oh no no but it's just when I first met my birth sisters that was a lot of it just in the beginning in the beginning like you know two hours just at, looking at each other laughing like we have the same frenulum oh my god you have like you have her exact face shape or you have her lips or oh my god your forehead looks exactly like how dad's looked I mean it just it was, uh, yeah, it, w it was, it was, it was overwhelming, but something that I think I had always, you know, kind of wanted. So. And did you, um, did, did you have to use uh, a tran an interpreter at first when you, when you first started searching, like dealing with the Korean government and that sort of thing? Yeah. So I did, I had a translator, um, for my first reunion, my false reunion. And then throughout my search for my, you know, legitimate biological family. But once I, once I um, received the DNA results back, 
um, from my legit biological family. Because I really, I had such, I was like so defensive. Um, I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't want to be in touch with them at all until I knew for sure that we oh, were related. Course. Just because, yes. you know, I had been burned before. Absolutely. Um, so after like three tests, I was like, okay, after three, I know it's like a real, it's, it's a done deal. Um, yeah, I, I was fortunate enough because one of my sisters um, is actually a professor of English studies. Um, and, and she studied uh, in the U.S. Um, another one of my sisters um, is almost fluent in English. And she, like her husband, is actually a jazz musician of some note in Korea and cool. he studied at the Berkeley School of Music in ah, Boston cool. and lived there for a while so her English is great and then the other two um their English wasn't as good but they're so expressive that like we just kind of figured it out and my birth mom didn't speak a lot um which was sort of difficult um and then on the flip side I was learning just kind of like very basic Korean. So we were able to get through, but a lot of the onus fell on my one uh, bio sis who's, you know, a professor of English. So right. Of course. She, she translated a ton. <laughs> I'm, I mean, but I'm sure for everyone, it was such a, an amazing you yeah. know, experience that even, even with those difficulties, it's still must have been just amazing. Yeah, I mean, you would be surprised. Like, um, so my husband John like laughs. He's like, "You have about like fifteen Korean words that you just like use as comedy hammers." Because like, <laughs> you'd be surprised like how far you can get with like, you know, hello, goodbye, thank you, please, I'm sorry, uh, water, beer, cave, like perfect. Cave. Yeah, cave. Dude, you, cave is so funny. Cave is so funny. It's just like a great thing to throw in. You're like, uh, that manjangu. Mm. You know, like you just throw it in. Rainbow, like they're just words that if you're creative enough, you can figure out ways to use them. Do you feel like, do you feel like you've been able to enjoy uh, visiting South Korea uh, as just a place in addition to Oh, the family search. Yeah, that's such a good question, because honestly, like my first visit to Korea, my first time, you know, back since I had been um, adopted um, and really the first time I could actually process it um, uh, was in 2011. And so meeting my fake bio family um the, my favorite part of that whole trip was getting to know Korea. Um, and, and I mean, especially Seoul is so awesome. It's so accessible for Westerners. Um, and yet it is, it's just, you know, something that's so, there are things that I, I'm sure I totally missed, um, like culturally. Um, but you mean, you mean you mean that you didn't get? Is that what you mean? Like yeah, missed, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's accessible enough that you can go as a Westerner. You can navigate right. it. You can use the like it's um like their transit system. It's really intuitive. Like everything. Like people, especially I found when when you know as an adoptee, someone who might look Korean but definitely isn't, um, to travel with with my white family and my white husband, it's like we got a lot of attention. And people were so nice. They went out of their way to help. Oh, like, so they're great. very warm toward, uh, you know, Americans. Um, mm. Not always the case when I was alone. Um, but, um, but yeah, so it's, it's so easy to just, like, explore the city and love it. But there were, you know, things which I'm sure I just miss because I, you know, don't speak the language and I just, I, sure. I don't understand the cultural nuances, but um, yeah, I, uh, Seoul is awesome. It's been really nice, like, um, you know, going there initially and then going back to search, going back again and then again. So I've been, it's been now like, I've probably been four or five times for extended periods of time and um. It's just, I just love Korea. It's so beautiful. And do you know that it's on the same um, latitude as like Boston? 
I didn't know that. That's cool. So it gets really cold in the winter yeah. and it's it's just gorgeous. It's all the mountains. It's so pretty. And I mean, the food is bomb. That is fantastic. So yeah, so, so you are a person who grew up in four season weather in uh, uh, in upstate New York and uh, went to college in Vermont. And so when you- Middlebury. Right, we're gonna talk about that in a second. Oh, so no, yeah, so go, so go, <laughs> so go, yeah, so going to Korea and having, so you could, but living in LA for as, as long as you have, you, you know, uh, same with me, I grew up in the Midwest where we have four seasons and living in LA, you kind of, you're like, wait a minute, when, is it fall? Because it's not, you know, uh, the leaves aren't falling and it's not cold. Um, that sort of thing. So yeah, so going to Korea and, and realizing that there are four seasons must be pretty rad also. Um, yeah, uh, and I've been lucky enough to now visit in almost every season except for winter, so. Cool. Um, yeah. So back to uh, Cooperstown, New York, did you ever, growing up in Cooperstown, do people talk about the baseball hall of fame in Cooperstown, New York? Do they talk about that? Is that, is that a thing that a- Like Cooper's locals? <laughs> They're like, hey, Tom, I heard Catherine had a baby. Go to the, the baseball hall of fame. looking good. Still made out right. of bricks. Fair like, enough. Yeah. All right. So um, <laughs> I'm going to cut that out in, in the future no, versions of this podcast. Don't cut it out. Because I'll tell you, like, yes, the hall of fame is a major draw for tourists. I mean, Cooperstown is the seat. Um, the county seat for like the courthouse. There's a, a big hospital there, which is a giant employer. And then tourism is a major draw. So, cause it's this tiny village and it swells up in the summers. Um, and so, yeah, I think locals, it's sort of an annoyance at times, you know, like um, the town, like commercially, there used to be all these really cute stores and, little cafes and um, there came a point where just baseball like took over and that was now our main street is like everything is baseball themed and it's sort of lame but um, you know it is what it is uh, so I think while locals can be annoyed by it they also kind of understand that that's kind of what makes that's... the local economy r run and um, yeah. I think in recent years, like I was just in uh, New York, um, in Cooperstown, and the town's starting to diversify a little more. And uh, yeah, I really, I really, I really hope it continues to do so because um, I just miss some of those cute ass shops on the main <laughs> street, you know? Now everything's like the weird, it's just like, ugly baseball shit but yeah i went i recently i recently moved we recently moved and i went back to my old neighborhood in los angeles and i was like hey wait a minute where did that one place go that was right there so like i'm talking about within a couple of months it's well, changed i do you know? like, feel like covid has had yeah. a huge um you know use your words Michaela. Uh, yeah, COVID, COVID's like really impacted. Yeah, a lot of retail. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, Venice is wild. A lot of changes yeah. on the West Side too. Yeah. Um, so you f somehow find your way to Middlebury College. Was it because what? How did that happen? Like, how did how did you make that choice? Um. Okay. I small liberal arts college in in Vermont. Yeah, so when I was looking at schools, thinking back on this, I'm like, why did I, why? Um, I told my parents that I, I would like refuse to look at any school in New York State. I really wanted to feel like I was getting away from home. But like Middleware is closer than a lot of other schools. <laughs> like what, what? I just needed that border, that firm border. Um, it's a beautiful school. Uh, you know, I, I knew it offered a great education. I also really wanted to play soccer in college and I did so, uh, at mid and, um, I don't know why, but like when I was looking at schools, my mom would be like, oh, you're going to get lost at a big school. You'll just, you'll just get lost. Like, well, you are I, little, I know, but like, I'm not going to get, I mean, <laughs> not the, not the, so, so you were a Middlebury Panther. Yeah. 
Go Panthers. Uh, were you an athlete in high school? Is that is that what? Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah, I played soccer like in high school on a bunch of club teams, ODP. Like it, soccer was my main kind of sport. But I swam, um, play a lot of tennis. Uh, you know, were you, had you been a theater kid also, or, or forensics, or debate team, or anything like that? Um, sort of, sort of ooh, I wish. <laughs> a forensics club. Um, I was not on debate. Yeah, I. I did do, I mean, that's sort of like the beauty of growing up in a small town. I feel like kids who are raised in a small town think they can do anything. And in fact, they do do everything because they're like, oh, I'll like be in the school play and I'll like be the captain of my sports team. And I'll like, you know, um, I'll like lead the Leo club or, you know, whatever it is. The, the, I, Leo, the Leo club? Yeah, I don't know. My niece is like, on the Leo, the Leo Club, what? like a big service oriented. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. there's a lot of okay. volunteering. Sure, um, sure. But um, yeah, I, I, from an early age, I loved to um perform. So I would, um, I was involved in a lot of like regional theater, uh, productions, and even there's a the Glimmer Glass Opera House in Korea. I mean, in Korea, Jesus, in Cooperstown. <laughs> Uh, and I was lucky enough to be a part of um, uh, a couple productions there. Um, so that's, you were a legit theater kid. I mean, but not really. Like, I, I guess, like, I'll go to theater camps and stuff. I just loved it. But I knew I didn't want to study it in college because I'm like, oh, what if it doesn't work out? Then what am I going to do? Uh, so, you're, you're, you're preaching to the choir. I was the same. Yeah, but look at us now, Mike. <laughs> We're talking on mics. We are. Uh, on a freaking so Twitch show. Come on. <laughs> it's like, we don't need degrees for this. <laughs> Just be ourselves. Uh, so what did you major in? Uh, I majored in, in international studies and econ. Uh, my, my like, Middlebury is great. So it, like, it's, it's, uh, you know, it really was a true liberal arts education. I studied abroad in Spain. I mean, you, you did. Were talking, yeah, you were talking about um, you were talking about seasons. Like once I I was in um, in Spain for the spring semester, and I came back, and my dad's like, "Oh man, you've been ruined." I was like, after that point, I was like cold all the time, and like uh, so, I think it was only a matter of time before I made the transition to uh, L.A. <laughs> Uh, so Middlebury College founded by a Gamaliel painter. Dude, do you know this shit off the top of your head or you're just, you don't? I looked it up. Okay. I do my research. You know, there's, a, um, Gamaliel has a, there's like a cane. So I was about to ask graduate, you about the cane. Yeah. When you graduate, you, you get a cane. cane and it's like Gamaliel. Okay. So. I thought the song went like Gamaliel, Gamaliel, Gamaliel's cane and a rap, rap, rap and a tap, tap, tap. Okay, I thought that was like an actual sure. song. Yeah. And I guess it's not. I guess I like made it up and then I convinced myself it was legit. Well, uh, a song was written. Oh, was it? But oh, it yeah. Like rap, rap, rap. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you about oh, it yeah. in one second oh, yeah. because okay. a, a legit, there is a legit uh, song. Um, uh, hold on. <laughs> it does, it does have a rap, 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 tap, tap, it tap. It does? Okay, yeah, so I'm absolutely. not making this up. It, you are not. Thank God, Mike. <laughs> thank God. Oh, thank uh, Gamaliel. Jesus. And it's, it was, it was, um, it was written in, um, uh, 19, hold on. It was written in 1917. Uh, when Gamaliel Painter died, he was Middlebury's pride, a sturdy pioneer without a stain, and he left his all by will to the college on the hill and included his codicil cane. Oh, it's rap, 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 and it's tap, tap, tap. If you listen, you can hear it sounding plain. For a helper true and tried, as the generations glide, there is nothing like Gamaliel Painter's cane. Yes! I, you know what? I implore you. I'm going to do this as well, to integrate rap, 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 and tap, tap, tap into our uh, daily uh, conversation. Daily conversation, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I, I mean, I think it would make uh, Yam and Little Painter proud. 
Instead of like when I knock on doors and like knock knock, I'm just gonna be like rap 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 and a top top top, housekeeping. Uh, so you you did you continue doing perf, uh, perf, did you have time while you were at at Millbury to do any performing stuff? No, I like a um. We have January terms at mid, so for the month of January, you take one course, which is rad because then you could have a lot of time to go skiing. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so I would take like I took acting, intro to acting. I took like a film class. I took a women in film class, but I wasn't trying out for productions. I, I like I joined a um like a world hip hop dance troupe at school, which nice. Was really cool. Yeah, so I mean, I I got to perform a a little bit, but um, no, I wasn't really acting. I I always knew I was gonna go after mid. I was gonna go uh to New York and I you know study acting in the city and just try to make a go of it there. How did how did that go? Went pretty well. I um, yeah, my parents gave me the best graduation gift ever. They gave me their uh, emotional and financial support to live in New York um, for like a year. And I mean, their emotional support continued beyond that, but um, <laughs> rap, 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 and a top, top, top. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was awesome. Um, I studied with this old dude named Gene Frankel. Of course, um, yeah. Do you know who he is? Yeah, 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 of course. I lived do in New York for a while. Yeah. yeah. We, He's well known in in New York and in, in yeah, New, yeah. He is. I feel like he was like the younger of that whole generation of like theater. People. Yeah, and what do you remember uh, around when that was? What when he? No, no, no. When you were there, like. Oh, do you remember? Were you completely was blacked it, out? No, was or... it right after college or was yeah, it... yeah, yeah, right after oh, okay. college, right. right after yeah. college. Um, so around like oh. Five oh six, um, and and he would call me Mahalia. I was like, Gene, my name is Michaela, and he's like, I know Mahalia. I was like, all right, cool. And he would always talk about like urgency and my needs. Nice. He'd be like, he'd be like, it's like you're squeezing your sphincter, and I'm like, sphincter? I'm pretty sure it's a sphincter, but cool. <laughs> Gene, got it, Gene. Um, I freaking <laughs> loved, I loved studying. Like, so I moved to New York and I took like this kind of intensive with him. And it was just sort of this motley crew of people who, you know, wanted to study acting. One, like one guy was um, a corporate lawyer and he would come on his lunch breaks and he was this brilliant actor, but felt like he could never actually pursue it. Um, this girl from Brown, who's now like a, uh, she's a professor of like, I feel like, I feel like she's a professor of like gender studies. Um, yeah, some really, really cool people. And this one other woman who became um, a writer and I recently saw her name when I was rewatching The Americans. I'm like, nice. What? Yeah, legit. So it's just like, was a cool, a cool, cool mix of people that's a i mean studying with an actor studio person is a real that's a real like new york yeah. actors thing i mean like that's an amazing um uh, yeah resume. And, and i had never you know i had never really done anything so um i mean i'd done things but i never like i hadn't like studied so uh it was cool to really immerse myself in it um and then I would also um, be, be uh, you know, showing apartments on the side because I worked at a real estate agency. You did? Yeah. Bro. <laughs> this is and the worst. You find, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you find yourself to, to LA. Did you, did you know friends here? Did you know people here? Did you have a soft landing? Oh, you were... Mike, bro. When I was in New York, I booked Barney, which is oh. filmed in Dallas. Oh my gosh. So I had to move away from like all my friends and like all that beautiful diversity. I finally was like, yeah, like, you know, growing up in a white family in a very white town and then moving to New York, I was like suddenly being regarded as like a very Asian person. And I'm like, wait, 
oh, I guess I am Asian. Like I had this giant awakening. And then I moved to Dallas for this job and it was like- Barney and friends? Yeah, it was very confusing and hard. Um, I think I was not, I don't know. Dallas has come a long way, but when I when I was there, I, I found it to be hard, um, you know, being like a single woman of color there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then from there, I, I, I had to move there the first time for, um, I think they made me be there for like eight months. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> and so then I would only go during shooting and I would go back to New York and then eventually I moved to LA. So I'd split time between Dallas and LA and LA is the best. I love it. So you would go, it would, it was, it, you did it more like a, you eventually did it. Uh, Barney more like a, a traditional LA actor would if they booked yeah. a job they would their home base would be LA they'd go um, for a few weeks or months or whatever when they were working and then they'd come back home that sort of thing yeah I just um Dallas just really wasn't for me I was lucky I had some friends there uh who I met and then one girl uh who I grew up with in the coop uh she lived in Dallas so that that was nice but um yeah I just you know, it, it's just, for me, it was great to kind of just get started in LA. I had heard that it takes a while to kind of get your bearings here. And so it comes soon enough. Yeah, I think it's different. I think I think you uh, you probably benefited, uh, I mean, for, from my perspective, when I came here, uh, it seemed like people who arrived in Los Angeles for the for entertainment industry, who had a job already or had something kind of notable on their resume already had an easier time of things than people who just showed up kind of like i'm ready to yeah. be discovered or something like that like give me an agent yeah give me a series yeah. do, 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 so do you feel like barney gave you an advantage when you no. when you no <laughs> i mean what well, I, I don't know all right no what was that was that job a um what, what was the what, mechanically what it was like? What was it like? Were you in a booth? Were you in? Uh, um, were you on set while people were were running around in their character costumes and that sort of thing? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. So run throughs. You'd be on set while people are in their costumes running around. By the way, I had no idea it was live action before I got hired. I, oh, really? I thought it was like an animated. I don't know. I just. Yeah. I guess I knew. I guess I had seen it when I was younger, but it, it, it never occurred to me that like, it wasn't, I, it never occurred to me that there were actual people Yeah, yeah. inside the suits. Maybe I just wanted to believe that there are, you know, like um, Triceratops Psy running around and, and, Tyra, and yeah, T-Rexes. That's, yeah. what, that's what makes you good at your job. You thank you, thank you. Defending. Okay, um, so yeah, so but then when we'd shoot it, I would be in a booth. There's uh, two cam or two screens, you know, the split screen of all the cameras. Then the director's cut, and um, my feed is going directly into the ear of the guy in the suit. And so it was awful for them because oh during breaks, <laughs> we the voice actors were all in our booths, fucking chilling out. Those guys are like so tired. They've been running in, around in their suits. We're, we're yapping away and they're just like, shut up. Like they go, they go find a camera and they're like, Michaela, stop. Like they- They really they, would do that? They'd really- Yeah, they couldn't turn us off. They couldn't turn us off. Wow. So we try to be respectful or they'd be like, please mute, you know, but, um, and then <laughs> it's also, you know, really is a collaboration because these guys are running around and like, you know, the mechanism, that makes their jaw flap. Like if they're running and their jaws going, for me, the way to cover was I would just laugh. Yeah. Because otherwise it I would went... just look, it, otherwise to the cho to the people, watch, to the viewers, it would look yeah. weird that the mouth was moving, but there was no sound coming no out. No sound, right. Or I'd have to go in and do ADR. So I'm like, no, or not even ADR, just, yeah, yeah. So ADR for, people who aren't familiar is additional dialogue recording, which means that the actor providing the voice either for themselves as a, as a person on camera or for an animated character or for, in this case, a live action puppet type character, you would, after the initial photography is done, you would then go back 
and fix things with additional recordings. And you, <laughs> obviously you were smart enough to not want to do, <laughs> so you would say like, I'm gonna provide the sound. <laughs> it's not like I was getting paid extra. Right. So I'm like, oh, I'll just... <laughs> yeah. Do you, what, what do you feel like was a, 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 a big sort of I've arrived in LA kind of break for you in, in, uh, in working? Like, was it a commercial? Was it a show? What happened that made you say like, all right, being in LA was a good decision for me. I mean, apart from the lifestyle, like just for work. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. There are a few moments. Um, one of them was fairly early on. I booked a, um, a video game and I was, I got my final, I, that's how I got my SAG status. That was like the, the final thing that, that right. got me my card. Um, and then I was later replaced because they wanted a real Chinese boy. I'm like, oh, I'm boy. not a boy and I'm not Chinese, but like, <laughs> it, um, but you know what? It didn't matter. Cause I'm like, all right, now I'm in the union. This is great. Um, and quite, I mean, this is, the real, here's the, you want the truth? I'll tell you the truth. The real moment, I think, was um, getting dropped from my first voiceover agency. Really? Yeah, and I feel like, I was like, oh, I have arrived. Like, you're not anybody until, like, you get rejected. Yeah. You know, I, like, that means that you're putting yourself out there. That means... And, you know, it, that was hard to digest at the time, but I'm so thankful that they dropped me because from there I was able to uh, meet with Abrams and um, I'm still rep by them and uh, I'm absolutely in love with uh, my representation there. So, they, yeah, they, I mean, they've, t I feel like my, the things that I'm doing now are because of Abrams because we've been, you know, working together to kind of, Full disclosure, uh, yeah. both Michaela and I are represented by the same voiceover company, Abrams, also known as A3 Artists. Oh yeah, it's A3 now, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so you, you've you done some some legit, um, uh, some pretty legit shows um, and games, Fallout 76, Lego Dimensions, uh, Grand Theft Auto. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm laughing. not picturing you, I'm not picturing you playing GTA five on your couch in your button down and tie. Don't well, that's a, that is a, that, that is a good, not picturing. Um, <laughs> that is an accurate, not picturing, uh, monsters at work, uh, kid cosmic, uh, two Pong birdie, Craig of the Creek, adventure time, distance lands, uh, distant lands. Um, but the thing, I think the thing that you probably are get the most attention for and attend comic cons and et cetera for is Steven universe, of course. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing that has really blown up. Yeah, and that was the real, real thing where I was like, oh, okay, it, this is why I'm in LA. Yeah. It's opportunities like like this, you know, like Steven Universe. Um, uh, what a, I mean, I just think about like, right before I booked Steven, I was feeling kind of like, oh, shoot, what am I doing here? I definitely looked on Craigslist gigs. Like I was searching Craigslist gigs for like part time See if you work. could get a real estate job showing showing apartments. Yeah, I was just like, oh, <laughs> frick, what do I do? And then Steven came and I was like, uh, and it changed everything. Um, but, but that was right before I was, I remember my dad, I told my dad, yeah, I'll give it a go in LA like I never was gonna move from LA but I'm like oh I'll, I'll I'm gonna keep at you know trying to act until I'm 30 and then I remember my dad's like well you're 30 so what's happening because I had turned down some I've been offered some jobs working for like corporate real estate firms and I was like no nah, I'm not gonna do it my parents are like but you have benefits. Like, why Why would you not want security? And I'm like, no, I really think this is going to work out. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad I held out and, and kind of went over my self-imposed <laughs> yeah. um, timeline. Deadline. Yeah. yeah, deadline. But, um, but yeah, Steven Universe uh, is a property um, that I will always hold dear. Um, the people I met on that production are 
very good friends of mine now and um I just learned so much from Rebecca Sugar the creator and you know I'm really happy to to call her a good friend now so. for, for anybody who doesn't who, who hasn't seen it or doesn't know it uh Steven is a real is a human I mean it's an animated show but Steven is a human boy and um uh the crystal gems are um alien supernatural alien beings and They're space uh, rocks yeah and um, Michaela plays Amethyst, one of the crystal gems. And, um, but the show is known for deep heart and soul and not being afraid to embrace all kinds of um, uh, culturally and, and, and politically pertinent issues of the day and um, with a real, with, with real love. Um, it, it, I mean, I, you can speak to it better than I can, obviously, but it must have been, it must still feel like just an amazing uh, career thing to be associated with something that's not just a great job and, but, and a fun job, but oh, also yeah. something so meaningful. To completely. I think um, you're totally right. It's, it's you know, what, what it really did um, besides being wildly entertaining and just beautiful to look at and the music is to die for and, um, you know, with voices like Patti Lapone lending, you know, like, yeah. like when do you watch a cartoon and Patti Lapone is just like dropping <laughs> shit on you. It's incredible. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's true biggest kind of cultural value is, is it's, um, push for representation and diversity in so many ways. Um, you know, I've learned so much through the show. I didn't, I didn't know a ton, like when it first started about gender fluidity. Um, I didn't know much about like pronouns. I didn't know. Um, I didn't even, it didn't even occur to me, like I'm not a big cartoon watcher, but it never occurred to me that like, oh, cartoons rarely represent different, even just body types. Um, and, and the sort of, um, you know, visibility that so many people are not able to, to even project ever. Like, I, I'm, no, that sounded so weird. <laughs> we can't project here. No, but I mean, I think on a lot of, a lot of cartoons, you don't even, I guess, I don't know, you, you're not even thinking about it. I, I mean, this is like, we're like living in a world where, People are like, oh, this is a panda. That's Asian representation. And you're like, what? But it, but it's a panda. Yeah. Like, um, so being associated with the show and then being able to meet so many fans of the work, um, what it helped me realize is how important it is for people to see themselves on screen. And, um, and I mean, the show, it just really, it really means something. Um, to really everyone who watches it, 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 there are so many cases of parents who've told me, you know, this is how I've bonded um, with my kids over this, or, you know, kids who are like, okay, when I was going through chemo, like, this is what I watched, it gave me hope, or, you know, people who are um, not out to their family yet, you know, and just seeing like, um, the there's an episode called The Reunion, and there's a, um, I think Steven Universe was the first animated show to uh to to show a gay wedding is that right yeah that sounds right <laughs> yeah and i mean the the show and rebecca sugar have have been nominated and then won um numerous glad awards um she also won a um what's it called oh good one it's a good, one. We, it's can a come good one we can come back yeah but it's just it's incredible yeah uh and, and you that's caused you to like go to comic cons and 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 meet fans in person and that sort of thing what's yeah. that what's that like i mean that's 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 an exciting uh but probably also kind of perilous in some ways um yeah it's it's really exciting um it's it's exciting. It, it can be quite overwhelming. Um, really, when I'm 
when I'm like sitting at a table and like people will come up with fan art or prints that they have or like, you know, merch from the show, I'll sign it for them. And I, you know, I like to talk to, to people and kind of learn about them and what the show means to them. Um, and it's, a, it is exhausting. Um, but it's not because I'm talking. It's, 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 it's a, it's very active listening. It's the intense, you know? in, intense sort of attention required to. Totally. And a lot of these, a lot of the stories that I hear are, are very emotional. Um, um, one, one community that I've come to, to know pretty well through the show is, um, the autistic community. And, um, that's really been, it's really been, it's really been special, um, for me and especially, um, you know, so many of these, uh, kids, well, and adults are incredible artists as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just rambling now. I'm just rambling, <laughs> well, you know? uh I, I, well, I can I can tell you that Rebe Rebecca Sugar also won a Peabody Award for. Oh, um, that's what it was. I was like, oh, it's a good one. Yeah, the Peabody. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a serious award to win. Um, like, you know that the P Award. I knew it wasn't a Pulitzer. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it's touched. It's just one of those shows that's just it's touched so many lives and been so meaningful to so many people that I imagine being in person, signing autographs, having conversations, um, uh, and, and doing, you know, just any sort of live appearance must, must really be um, uh, both sort of invigorating and exciting and, and heartwarming, but also um, emotional. Yeah, I mean, I think early on, well, Steven Universe from the beginning, uh, was a big hit online, and um, I think, uh, yeah, a lot of the the most ardent fans were online. So I think it was a little uh, little touch and go in the beginning. Like, <laughs> you know, if you say a wrong thing, they're all over you. But um, uh, you know, I I think we kind of learned how to interact with with the fandom uh, online and and kind of. Um, yeah, how to interact and, and, and kind of learn and, and listen to them, learn yeah. from them and listen to them. And then, um, I mean, one of my favorite memories is um, Comic-Con. One of the, one, um, I'm trying to think of what year it was, we did like a rock show mm -hmm. uh, in San Diego and it was a blast. Um, and then... This past year in, oh, not this past year. Oh, my God, we lost a whole year. But uh, a couple right. of years ago in New York, we did another huge um, musical show. And um, I, I actually got to host uh, the whole panel. So cool. Interviewing my castmates was, uh, it was, it was kind of fun to put them all in the hot seat. So. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's had a, a pretty, pretty huge, it's, really put its um put itself on the map you know 170 episodes or something like that and um um obviously the awards and etc and spin-off things and and that sort of thing it's it's a really it must be really uh you must be very proud of uh of the whole yeah, thing yeah i i am and i i really i'm very proud i just feel i'm constantly feeling very grateful for the experience and um, what's what's great is I think Rebecca Sugar really pushed the boundaries in her um, creativity and her portrayal of of characters and relationships. And I, um, what really warms my heart is now that Stephen is over, I see pieces of her work and and her influence in so many other properties. And um, so I think we're just working toward you know a place where we're not like raving about the representation here. It's just become a very, you know, normalized thing to represent everyone. So, yeah. Cool. What, um, it, so when, you, when you've when you been involved in such a huge thing like that, 
Um, what effect does that have sort of on your, I guess your day-to-day -day life? I mean, if you're, if you're an on-camera uh, at live action actor, you're gonna get, you know, in a big thing, you're gonna get recognized, you know, um, in the grocery store and that sort of thing. For voice acting, that's something that you can kind of, you can kind of avoid. <laughs> Um, but I've heard, I think I've had this conversation with you, I've heard of other voice actors who have gotten recognized by their voice um, in places. Has that ever happened to you? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, not a lot of people have my voice. Right. Yeah. You and Just you and your mom. You're, you're, <laughs> your, your Korean my mom. My K-mom, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yes, I was in... I was at this uh, uh, sushi restaurant downtown, which John and I used to frequent a lot pre-COVID. And there's always this like badass female chef there. And one day she was like, are you Michaela Dietz? <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> and you, you thought she was gonna say, it. are you Michaela Dietz? Your cucumber roll is ready. But yeah. instead it was- <laughs> I was like, what? Um, and I have to assume that's because she watched the show. I don't know. I mean, I was doing a lot, like some YouTube shit at the time. I have no idea. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm I glad that no one knows my face. I would say like the way it affects my day-to-day -day life. I mean, there are some like pretty turbo people online. So I do, um, I do keep things private, I would say. Um, for a while, I was getting some creepy mail yeah. sent to me directly. Not great, uh, but you know. Yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the the arrows of, of yeah. the, the business. You become a target in some cases, unfortunately. Yeah, but like at the end of the day, like nobody knows who I am, and um, like even most, I feel like even people who like TV. They're like, oh, what Steven's universe? Like a lot of people just don't know the show. So it doesn't really matter. <laughs> so I can give you an example of a, of a situation where people did, which is that a couple of years ago, I, I, I'd been doing and have been doing high school theater festivals for years, performing and, and teaching at them. And I asked Michaela to, um, to record a greeting for, uh, my classes. So I, I go to these festivals and there's like thousands of theater kids, thespian kids there. And, and um, so I did a week of classes where in the, in my morning classes were more about like acting and improv and stuff. And then the afternoon classes were voiceover classes. And I would play this recording that Mika Michaela made this recording on her iPhone at our agent's office with our engineer, Eric. And she recorded this thing and said like, Hey students, How's Mike's class? I hope you're having a good time. This is Michaela Dietz, Amethyst from Steven Universe. And I would play that for my classes. And, you know, a hundred kids are to be sitting there or whatever. They would lose their shit. It was, it was crazy, the response that that little that's greeting. That's the target had. demo. I mean, that's like fishing in a barrel. Well, yeah, but I mean, you can't, I mean, I'm not, I'm not ashamed. It put me totally on the map, legit wise. Like they were like, "Oh yeah, I'll take this in, this uh, this voiceover workshop from this guy at my theater camp for the summer." And then and then this yeah, you know, turns out I know Michaela Dietz. It was a huge thing. It was like a huge legitimizing thing for me. So thank you for that. Um, thank you. They absolutely yeah. I mean, they were freaking. Out. They were freaking out to the point where in a couple of the classes you did this video where you're looking at the camera and then you turned it a little bit and then suddenly eric is there yeah. our our engineer who is you know eric is lovely and it's in punk bands and is an amazing engineer he's one and stuff of the funniest people i know and he's also like i mean he's always on my insta stories and my feed i feel like i do a lot of content with eric big on so you turned you turned the camera and some kids freaked out and said there's eric <laughs> And I was like, what? And it was because they follow you on social media that they knew him. And I was like, oh man, I gotta get on Michaela's social media. So um, yeah, so that was amazing. Uh, so what, what are your thoughts? I, I, I wanna close with some, 
you know, I don't know if you want to call it advice or just tips or just uh -huh. thoughts for, I don't know, uh, uh, anybody, like somebody maybe that's interested in, in acting or in show business or somebody that's, um, anybody that you want to talk to that you, you, you want to offer advice to, um, or just thoughts about your journey and lessons you've learned, anything at all? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, uh, shoot, man. Yeah, okay. So if we kind of rewind back to talking about, um, arriving in LA with or without plans. And I think there are so many people who come to LA and, uh, they don't quite know how to get into the biz or where to start. And I would say, do your research. You should never pay a rep uh, to represent you. Um, you know, there are. I think you you'll be lucky if you find people out there um, who are supportive, like peers who you can collaborate with, or um, you know, like for me and Mike, I used to see him at auditions, and we just became friends. And I feel like we're always like, oh, what are you up to? How's thing? How are things going? It's just nice to have people to check in with. Um, so hopefully you can build a support system like that. Um, I, I mean, I, I feel like a broken record. I always say this, but um, don't be afraid of no. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna face, uh, you know, a fair amount of rejection. It, it really is a numbers game. Um, and, uh, you know, hopefully you can let that drive you and, um, do what you can to not only hone your craft, but, um, you know, work on yourself as a, a human and an interesting person. I feel like um, if you're just so focused on acting, uh, you know, you need life experiences to, to draw from. And whether that's, you know, whether you're on screen or you're a voice actor, it doesn't matter. You, you still need to be a good actor. And to be a good actor, you should be able to pull from you know, your life or the things that you see around you. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Try to have fun. Um, <laughs> That's great advice. Yeah, I think we, you know, we often get so lost in like, what do I have to do now? I need to be, you know, by the time I book such and such a gig, then hopefully I can get this and that. It's like, I don't know, just enjoy it because you never know what it's going to lead to. Um, the thing I will say is, just be like a decent human being. It doesn't matter if you're going into showbiz or not. I think um, what I realize um, lately is that having I've been lucky enough to 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 work a lot, and I just realize more and more like people want to work with talented actors, but they also want to work with cool, good people who are easy to work with. Um, who are good, you know, listeners can be directed, can add in their own, um, you know, takes. Like, I think, I don't know. It's, 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 uh, yeah, just, just be a good person. <laughs> like, nobody wants to work with a jerk. Great advice. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michaela, for being on the show and uh, offering your thoughts and your history and remembering the rap 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 tap 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 rap 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 and a tap 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 i wish i had my cane here i left it at home they really give you they everybody every graduate gets an actual cane bro yes it is the <laughs> coolest cane it is a straight cane it is reinforced at the bottom with this metal thing there's a ribbon the like the blue middlebury ribbon that's like off of it it is it i cannot wait until I like get my hip replaced so I can just walk around with this fucking awesome Gamaliel cane. <laughs> Cannot wait. Thank you for uh, watching and or listening to, uh, to our chat with Michaela Dietz, who is awesome and rad. Uh, at Whammy Ba, W-H-A-M-M-B-A-H. No, W-H-A-M-M-Y. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm God, just... Mike. Sorry. Uh, find her on the social medias, and uh, we'll see you next time on Impro Talk. And Michaela, we'll see you around. Yay! We'll see you on my Insta. 
well. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.